Hello and uh, welcome to River Talk. I have here with me today uh, Mariana Venning from the ECDG Environment, where she's the Director of Quality of Life, Water and Air. Uh, good, good morning. Good morning <laughs> Is it still morning? It's still morning. Um, I'd like to uh, put a few questions to you reflecting on the presentation you made in plenary today, where you were speaking about um, green infrastructure and how it's uh, important to integrate that into the delivery of water policy. Uh, maybe you could just start simply by explaining a little bit how you see the importance of green infrastructure to achieving water policy objectives. Yes, um, I'm happy to have the occasion here to explain a little bit our policy and as you referred to the Water Framework Directive, obviously when we have or when we look at the objective, this is to have a good ecological and chemical biological status, in general good water status. And in order to achieve this, we have to deal with a number of pressures on our waters that come from agriculture, from industry, or from climate change. And there are different ways of dealing with these pressures. Uh, very often we see uh, in our member states, uh, when they are setting up the river basin management plans, that they are doing this through sort of what we call grey infrastructure. Uh, but green infrastructure, in our view, is very often a better way of addressing these problems because they are nature-based solutions. Uh, for example, in the area of flood risk, we see very clearly uh, that it is not uh, very conducive very often to have big dikes and dams because it just uh, sets the problem from one uh, geographical area to the next one downstream, but rather to restore, uh, for example, floodplains. And in this uh, sense, it is uh, very important uh, that the green infrastructure, mainly water retention uh, measures uh, in the area of water, is, uh, is being implemented by member states. And, and we would like to uh, support and to encourage uh, work on these uh, type of green infrastructure in order to implement the Water Framework Directive sufficiently. Okay, so it's really an idea, an idea that's uh, found its time at the moment. Could you explain a little bit um, the sorts of measures or approaches that the Commission have taken to try and encourage this, this agenda to come forward into delivery of water policy? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, we see a couple of um, challenges in front of us. Uh, one, obviously, is that there is still not enough awareness about these issues. Uh, then we have uh, the problem of um, sufficient or insufficient financial incentives for these. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are trying to, uh, through our regional and agricultural funds, um, give member states the opportunity to use these funds for specifically uh, issues of uh, green infrastructure. And we have ourselves a number of uh, initiatives uh, with regard to uh, pilot projects, for example, that we are doing in the area of uh, natural water retention measures, uh, where we are currently finalizing the program. We will have eight case studies that we will put on WebStream, uh, and we have other policy documents uh, that we give out there to help uh, people and networks to uh, sort of discuss these options and to, to also implement them in a practical way. Okay, so the Commission's really invested a lot of time in uh, creating the right policy environment and some tools and mechanisms for member states to take it forward. You mentioned uh, a lack of awareness. Could you explain a little bit how you understand that, that issue and how that might be solved uh, in the coming years? Yes, uh, when we see the river basin management plans from the member states, uh, for example, uh, then we see that they are approaching problems in their river basin management in a way uh, that uh, they are not looking at nature-based solutions. As I said, they're looking often at hard grey infrastructure, especially when we talk about hydromorphological uh, changes uh, to water bodies. Uh, and in the flood risk uh, assessments that we have seen, uh, again, we find that uh, nature-based solutions are not very often as prominent as we would like to see them. So uh, with this, we are, uh, being aware of it, we are talking to member states. Uh, we are making them aware of uh, the problems that we see in their river basin management plans. We discuss with them in detail uh, of how they could change uh, track and introduce other measures. 
we are at the same time having a whole uh, structure set up uh, to implement the Water Framework Directive where we bring all the stakeholders together to look at individual problems um, to, to solve. And uh, these um, uh, natural water retention measures is a, is a specific issue that we are discussing with member states. And we hope, therefore, uh, that at some point uh, this awareness and the understanding of the benefits that are not only environmental but also economic and socially uh, are sort of widespread and be actually implemented. Yeah, maybe that's an, an interesting point to link to. There was another presentation this morning by uh, Alistair Driver and he was speaking about some of the UK experiences and he, he was talking about the difficulty of getting um, these environmental service ideas incorporated into budgetary and planning decisions in other ministries within governments. Do you see that as a common problem and is that something that the Commission can help shine a light on? We can help only to a certain extent uh, because it is in the end up for the member states to decide what they are going or what type of measures they are going to implement. Uh, but um, I mentioned previously the funds that we have, the regional funds, the agriculture funds, also uh, some uh, European uh, maritime and fishery funds. Uh, so these are opportunities uh, for member states uh, with their local and regional authorities to design plans, uh, measures in their river basin management um, or in their river basins uh, that they could actually bring to our attention and get funding for. But they have to do it. They, they have to come up with the right measures. Uh, and we can only support them by initiatives, as I've just mentioned before, making uh, more information available that is out there, as Alistair said this morning and demonstrated very clearly uh, this morning, that we, um, like I'm coming here today to uh, speak uh, to uh, interested parties, to networks, and encourage that these networks are actually uh, sort of um, go and spread out even further as they seem to do already. Yeah. So really as a final message to the, the, meet, the meeting and the participants here, the, the policy uh, levers and tools are there. It's really now you have to work locally to try and get this sort of integration to happen. Yeah, I, I would say locally, regionally and nationally because that is also very often uh, the issue that we do not see sufficient cooperation and coordination between the different governance levels and also with outside stakeholders, whether it's normal citizens or whether it's uh, sort of uh, industry, the energy industry in terms of hydropower. I mean, there are so many uh, people and interest groups out there uh, that are actually affected uh, by uh, the plans, the effects of these plans and the possible measures to address uh, the challenges that we think they all need to be brought together and uh, have a better understanding of uh, where the solutions could be. Okay, well, Mariana Veni, thank you very much for your time. Thank you.